the servers are at capacity. It's a common phrase online, but what does it really mean? And what exactly is a server? To understand what a server is, you first got to understand what the internet is and know a little bit about computer networks. Simply put, the internet is a collection of computers connected together by communications hardware, like routers and network cables. Whenever you access a web page, watch a video or send an email, there's another computer somewhere in the world that's providing the content or acting as the go-between to help you communicate with other computers. These computers, the ones providing the services, are what we generally refer to as servers. And the computers that receive those services are called clients. Easy as that. Servers serve content and services to clients. But that doesn't tell us much about the servers themselves. So what are they exactly? Any computer can be a server. Your home computer can be a server. Although your internet service provider or ISP probably prohibits you from doing that on a home internet subscription. It's not only traditional desktops either. Any network connected computer can act as a server, a client or both. Rather than being a description of a specific device, the concepts of client and server describe roles that computers have on a network. For example, an IP security cam. Those have dedicated server software installed on tiny embedded computers. So when you access the camera, you're logging into a server that provides you with a video stream. But not every computer is suitable to act as a server. Sometimes when the word server is used, it refers to specialized computers that are built from the ground up to specifically act as servers. If you were to venture into the typical server room of a website hosting company, you'd see rows and rows of cabinets. Inside these cabinets, you'd see racks of servers stacked on top of each other, as you can see here. Inside each of these racks, you'll find a special server-grade motherboard, RAM, CPU, and storage. In principle, these are the same components as the ones in your computer, except inside servers, they're far more powerful, reliable, and energy efficient. After all, these computers are working 24 seven, serving millions of requests from clients every day. This is why server hardware is much more expensive than the stuff you find in a consumer PC. Every minute a server is down may cost thousands of dollars in losses, so it's worth paying a premium to ensure the internet service in question remains available. Among other things, server hardware stands out in the following main ways. Server motherboards support large amounts of RAM, terabytes worth in many cases. Server motherboards often have multiple CPU sockets. Service CPUs tend to have many CPU cores and large amounts of cache. And server RAM is usually of a special error correcting type to ensure stability. Server power supplies may even be redundant, instantly switching over to a backup if the main unit fails. Did you know, rack servers also don't have keyboards, mice, screens, or speakers. Instead, you access them through the network, through the command line, or by using a remote desktop app. Although they usually do have the required ports to hook up these peripherals if needed. For more information about the different types of servers, check out the article linked below. See you next time.